Hi everybody, it's Christina from prettydistress.com and I am back with my last video in my painting a piece vlog. So at this point we have prepped our piece, we've painted it, we've distressed it, and we've done a coat of clear wax. So while my piece is still wet, my clear wax I just put on and um, it hasn't cured, it's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and do the dark wax process. I find that the dark wax is easier to work with and easier to blend if I'm going over a wet clear wax. So what I'm going to do, I have my, first I have my clear wax here, my anti clear wax, and I'm going to put just a little bit of that on my paper plate. Um, I also mix the clear wax with the dark wax. Um, again, to make it, I find it a little easier to work with. You can, it can get really muddy really quickly and it's a little intimidating um, to work with this dark wax. This is the Annie Sloan dark wax and that's what it looks like. So I'm going to be putting this on my piece. So I like to first have my piece wet as well as cut it with a little bit of the clear wax. So I'm going to take a different spoon. Um, I use different spoons for clear wax and uh, dark wax because you don't want to get any of your dark wax in your clear wax or you'll kind of contaminate it so you just want to keep them separately uh, keep them separate and I also use a separate brush for my dark wax so I have a, a wax brush devoted to my clear wax and then this is my dark wax one and it's a little bit smaller but it's the same natural bristle brush and I got this from um, an Annie Sloan stockist. It's called a waxing brush. It's not an Annie Sloan brush but it um, is a really good company and again when I'm done with these I clean them with Murphy's oil soap. It cleans it well and conditions it. You can also use lye soap. I've never used that before. I use Murphy's oil so that's how I clean it. Okay so I've taken, I have my clear and dark wax um, on my paper plate and I'm just going to take my spoon and mix them and blend them together. So I want to make sure that I don't have any white chunks in there. I'm trying to mix it. So this will cut cut it down a little bit and make it a little easier to work with. Um, the whole idea behind this dark wax is to make your piece look older and antique it. Uh, sometimes I don't use it. Um, a lot of times with white, I like it just to be clean and clear. So sometimes with white, I will not use a dark wax. I have used it with white and really like it. I have a Goodwill dresser if you guys want to check that out on my blog um, that I really like that I used a lot of dark wax on. And so I've decided to do some dark wax on this piece today. So I got that all mixed up now. So I'm ready to go. Um, what I'm also going to have on hand when I'm ready to do my dark wax is some fine steel wool. Uh, you find this in the section at the hardware department with uh, sandpaper. It's just another form to sand on. So what I'm going to do when I am painting on my wax, I'm going to go right over it with my steel wool and that kind of helps to control it and blend it in a little bit as well. Um, this part is very <laughs> intimidating. I get a little scared every time I'm doing it. Um, but again, you just want to get a little bit of wax on here. And I'm going to really rub it into my brush. So you can see I have some wax here. I'm going to get my steel wool ready. And then this, I'm just going to not cover the entire piece, but just go over my spots where I have distressed. So I do detailing and I do around the edges. So I'm going to start in here, rub that in really well, and then I'm going to take my steel wool over that and kind of get any globs that I see and just rub it in really well. Now this stuff does um, shed, so you'll go back over um, and buff and just kind of wipe those off after you're done. Um, I do my hardware a little bit too. I'm do these outside edges. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit more wax. And again, I'm rubbing it in, rubbing it in. I take most of it off, if you can see that. I very light-handed with this because it can get muddy really quickly if you're not careful. So it 
again, just make sure you're rubbing it in really well. And then I'm gonna go right over it. Well, it's so wet with my steel wool. Um, if you do get to a point where you feel like you've put too much dark wax on in a spot, you can take your clear wax, um, get a little bit on a cloth, and just go in that spot, and the clear wax will actually lift that dark wax off if you feel like you've gone too much at some point. Um, I've now moved to the side of my piece um, with my dark wax and I typically don't do the flat uh, pieces. I'm not going for a really heavily distressed look here, so I'm not going to do the side. I'm just going to kind of go in the detailing of the top and the bottom. So just want to show you. The wax is really hot. You want to try to keep it out of the sun and the heat it kind of melts it, so. I'm just gonna go and just detail in here, on the edge and the top. Rub it in really well. Then I'm gonna take my steel wool again and just blend that in. I'm now done with my dark wax and I took a cloth and went back and just make sure everything was wiped in and got rid of all my residue from my steel wool. And I went ahead and finished the mirror off and put the mirror on. So now you're looking at the completed piece. So it is done and ready to be sold at my garage sale. Um, I'm going to let this sit for like the next three or four days to make sure that the wax really cures before I put anything on it. Um, and then I'll probably stage a little photo shoot and put this up on the blog for you guys to see. So I hope you had fun learning about the process of chalk painting and waxing furniture. And remember to check out prettydistress.com for more tips on furniture painting, as well as see some of my work and for home decor ideas. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.